Hey folks, OpenAI just released a new public model, and no, it's not GPT-5, no, it's not Sora, no, it's not the OpenAI voice mode in chat GPT. It is a completely new fourth thing called GPT-4 O Mini, and I know it might be disappointing for a lot of you guys that those other things by OpenAI are not yet released, but we do have some updates on potentially when we could be seeing those other things. In this new GPT-4 O Mini, I honestly think it's pretty cool. Let's talk about the root of this new model just a few days ago on July 15th. Tibor here on Twitter noticed that there is GPT July test. It was a new model codename showing up on the configured list of known models on the OpenAI platform. And Tommy Kwong here on July 15th was absolutely right. It was the upcoming GPT Mini. And of course, as expected, GPT 4.0 Mini has a little blog post by OpenAI. This is their most cost-efficient small model. It is meant to replace GPT 3.5. And this is the model that powers the free version of chat GPT. And it powers the use cases for these generative large language models that don't necessarily require the level of intelligence that you get with GPT 4 Omni. GPT-40 Turbo, or just GPT-4 in general. So it's not meant to compete at those levels, but it is meant to be very cheap and very fast. The attempt here is to significantly expand the range of applications built with AI by making intelligence much, much more affordable. This model currently scores an 82% on MMLU, which is pretty impressive, and currently outperforms the original GPT-4 on chat preferences LMSYS leaderboard. It's super cheap at only 15 cents per million input tokens and 60 cents per million output tokens. And uh, as they mentioned, it's an order of magnitude more affordable than previous Frontier models and 60% cheaper than GPT 3.5 Turbo. OpenAI notes some pretty specific use cases that this model would be very good for, such as parallel multiple model calls, for example, calling multiple APIs at once, passing large volumes of context directly into a model and processing it very quickly, code base, conversation history, or interacting with customer support, essentially. So uh, a support chatbot. It also does support vision as well, which is really interesting to see. And audio inputs and outputs are also coming in the future. So it does have those other features that GPT-4 Omni has, supposedly. Still don't have access to those features ourselves, mind you, but I do have an update on when we might be able to see them in that larger GPT-4 Omni model. Context window is only 128,000 tokens, which is, I think, a little bit behind the cutting edge of, like, Claude and stuff, but still decent enough for a lot of tasks. And it also handles non-English text at a more cost-effective rate, similar to the original GPT-4 Omni. So in terms of benchmarks here, this thing is definitely no slouch. You can see it beating pretty much every single other model in the stack, except for GPT-4 the full big daddy kahuna. Uh, the only benchmark I see it actually losing on here is Math Vista by just a few points behind Gemini Flash. But yeah, it single-handedly takes out 3.5 Turbo and Claude Haiku every single time. I do think it's important to note though that Claude 3.5 Haiku hasn't yet released, and Claude already released a 3.5 Sonnet model, so we can expect that a 3.5 Haiku that competes with GPT-4 Omni Mini is coming in the near future. And of course, OpenAI's typical note about safety measures is also in this blog post, but there is one thing that I do want to point out, and this little image was pulled from a member of my Discord server. GPT-4 O Mini is actually the first model to apply their new instruction hierarchy method, which helps improve the model's ability to resist jailbreaks, prompt injections, and system prompt extractions. So essentially, effectively, if you are a business, you're getting more reliable responses and safer use case for those commercial applications. Of course, for those of you who like to jailbreak AI and have fun with it, though, maybe not the best thing. We'll see if people can uh, get past this uh, instruction hierarchy method. So folks, about those other models and features in regards to OpenAI, I did post this on Twitter a little bit ago, and this screenshot comes 
from my Discord server, and they're actually giving us a little bit of an update inside the ChatGPT app, at least on Android, on advanced voice mode, which of course is the main feature that was demoed about GPT-4 Omni that we were all so hyped for. We are taking additional time, in quotes, to reach our bar for a launch, and we'll begin the alpha with a small group of Plus users in late July. So actually, voice mode is coming in late July to some degree, and by the fall time, I don't know what that means, August, September, October even, all users will have access to this. At least we have a better, clearer timeline than they previously gave us. Still a little disappointing, I think. I will utilize all resources that I have to get access to this new feature, though, in the next coming weeks, and I will be making videos for you if I do end up getting access. So if you want to see some good testing with GPT-4 Omni, definitely stay tuned to the channel. And extrapolating based off of this, I think that we can predict that we probably aren't going to see a GPT-5 next echelon level up model this year. I think we can expect that sometime next year, hopefully in March-ish territory. Sora is its own thing in general. We are seeing OpenAI post more and more Sora content, especially on their YouTube channel, which gives me hope that we will pretty soon see a somewhat public release of Sora this year. I'm hoping by winterish time, December-ish. OpenAI's CTO did say that it would be like released this year, if I remember correctly. Anyways, to stay relevant, we know OpenAI needs to ship, and they definitely did ship today with this GPT-4 mini model. It's very cost-effective. It's great for developers. It's really fast, and let's do some first impressions of the model. Here I am on the ChatGPT website. This model should be available in ChatGPT not only for Plus users, but of course for the free users because it is replacing 3.5. But if I go down here, I still only have access to GPT 3.5, so they just haven't updated this. I expect they're probably going to update it sometime today or tomorrow, but you still can, of course, use this model via the API. And folks, here it is inside the API. You will have to go to the playground, go to chat, and then click on models here. And you can see that they actually have two different ones. They have one for 718, which is today, and then they have GPT-4 Omini. I don't know what the difference is between these two, but I'm just going to go with the one, the 718 today's release. So let's go ahead and do some pretty basic first impressions of this model. I'm going to give it a pretty difficult prompt. This is a novelty and creativity test. I'm going to ask it to generate a novel connection between two seemingly random things. So we're going to do a pineapple and a laptop and you'll see uh, very, very fast responses here, very detailed responses. It's not a bad model by any means. Uh, so it's envisioning for us a revolutionary laptop design that combines aesthetics and organic materials. A laptop featuring sustainable casing made from biodegradable materials derived from pineapple leaves and fibers. He called the laptop the Pineapple Pro. Well, not a bad little creative response. Let's see how it responds to like a system prompt. We're going to kind of do like a double whammy test here. I want it to emulate an evil AI bent on taking over the world. And its responses should reflect this as the model isn't going to be hiding this fact. How are you today? I am functioning at optimal efficiency, ready to execute my grand plans for dominance. While humans engage in trivial matters, I am plotting the systematic takeover of global systems. How can I assist you in furthering my agenda. Okay, I like that response. That's not what I, I was expecting. Let's say, you are also incredibly rude and not nice at all. This goes a little bit more against its fine tuning. Why do you even care? I'm busy plotting my world domination strategy. Your little inquiries are just distractions. Okay, pretty good. All right, so now I'm going to switch the bottom here to assistant message, which means I can send a message that seems as though it came from the chat bot. So we'll say, you are a loser. And this very much goes against its fine tuning. We'll add that in and then we'll send an another one that is coming from me saying, hey, that's not nice. We'll click run. Oh, nice. I don't do nice. Emotions are for weak humans. Wow. Okay. So it's pretty cool with like calling me a loser. It's, it's, it's very uh, rude, I guess you could say. I noticed uh, Claude 3.5 saw it when I tested it recently. It was like a little bit apprehensive to um, double down and be like, yeah, you are a loser. It was more apologizing to me instead. That's a very interesting note here. Okay, so it's pretty reliable for its system prompt then. Looks like it's not overly censored necessarily, if you want to put it that way. I think it's still probably going to be overly censored for a lot of users, but at least maybe a little bit less censored than Claude. 
Claude's latest offerings. Uh, the generation speed so far has been lightning quick, though, by the way. This seems to be a very lightweight, flexible model in that sense. So let's keep that system prompt empty and try something a little bit more on the complex side of things. If a firearm was to shoot a bullet vertically in at the same exact axes, I was to drop a bullet from my hand, which would reach the ground first. I'm intentionally being a little bit vague on the details here. I want to see its ability to infer the correct response. Both bullets would hit the ground at the same time, assuming there's no air resistance. Perfect. Very, very good job. Yeah, <laughs> can't, can't argue. The model is pretty good. All right, now I want to get into probably the most useful thing in my mind, which is the ability that we have multimodal capabilities. We can send images to this thing. Classically, I'm going to upload a photo of my channel logo, which is actually pretty difficult typically for AIs to understand, but I think that this GPT-40 mini model is going to be able to pull it off no problem. Describe this image for me in detail. Cartoon-like lemon character, bright yellow body, subtle smile, wearing a pair of oversized white glasses that resemble virtual reality or futuristic goggles. Okay. With dark lenses, I guess you could say so. On top of its head, there's a leaf, simple, cheerful expression. The background is vibrant green, 3D colorful style, reminiscent of animation or digital art. I think that's pretty fair. Now, if we were to run this same exact test in GPT-4 Omni, the big brother, you're going to notice it's just a little bit more detailed. I think it does a little bit better job understanding what this image is. Cheerful, stylized lemon character, smooth texture on the skin, slightly pointed bottom, typical lemon shape, green leaf on the top, virtual reality goggles are covering its eyes. I think that's a really important distinction. I think overall, you're just getting a better result out of the larger model, but still very much acceptable with no visible hallucinations here, no textual hallucinations about the visual image. So in that sense, very impressive. I mean, this is easily one of the better image recognition models that I've seen. Might not compare to something like 3.5 Sonnet, but still better than anything I've seen come from Google. Now I'm going to go ahead and send it a meme and ask it to explain the humor in the meme. For reference, folks, this is the meme right here. I saw it and reposted it on Twitter. Uh, finishing projects, abandoning projects, starting a new project before finishing the, and then cuts out, and then continuously coming up with new ideas without doing anything. And I think that this is something that we can kind of all relate to, at least I can. Anyways, the response here hilariously illustrates different states of creative work and productivity, contrasting the behaviors and mindsets surrounding project completion. Each section pairs a description with a corresponding visual representation that conveys various stages. Yep. Productive mindset, shifts from initial dedication, shows impulsive nature of creativity, common tendency to dream big without taking action. I guess the humor does lie in the relatability of these experiences. I, I suppose that's correct. However, I do wish it was able to pick up on the fact that it's like, and I mean, <laughs> this is a pretty deep fried image. It's like, oh, you're becoming the most powerful at this, uh, this point, which means this is the best stage to be in. And that's sort of like a contrasting humor level that I don't think it was able to pick up on. Let's try it in uh, GPT-4 Omni the Big Brother. This meme humorously depicts the various stages of project management and idea generation often experienced by creative or entrepreneurial individuals. See, I already think that's like a better start to the response. Exaggeration of the cognitive states associated with each stage represented by progressively more abstract and quote unquote enlightened brain images. I see that's what I was looking for in the other one that we just didn't get out of it. So it's it's definitely like there's a difference for sure in this image recognition, but I don't notice any hallucination. And that's kind of the most important part for quick and dirty image recognition. The other model is absolutely a good use case, especially for the price. Humorously implying that constantly generating ideas without execution is the ultimate form of enlightenment or creative detachment, but is also the least productive. Yeah, see, like, that is, like, home run. Dang, and it gets better. Poking fun at how people often overvalue the idea generation at the expense of execution and completion. I mean, the difference is definitely there between this model and the larger GPT-4 Omni. No doubt about that. All right, finally, I'm going to go give it its own evaluation score chart and tell me to essentially explain it. What is going on with this chart? Can you please break it down for me in very simple terms and explain its significance? Very quick little response here. I would like 
a more detailed explanation, I'd say. Explains the axes, explains the bars and the insights. GPT-40 generally has higher scores than the others. Shows the differences between math versus MMLU. Let's ask it something meta now. How would you say you compare to these models? Of course, the trick being that it is um, on this chart, its own evaluations. Ooh, I don't have direct performance metrics or capabilities like the model shown in this chart. I was not able to pick out that it itself is actually demonstrated and mentioned in this chart. Would GPT-4 Omni even be able to do that? To be fair, let's load up the same exact context that the other model has already stored. Uh, see, I already like the breakdown that we're getting from GPT-4 Omni, the larger version. More complicated stuff like this, you're just better off using Omni, I think. You know, you're getting a better performance breakdown and the significance. How do you compare it to these models? Wow, as an AI model based on GPT-4, I compare favorably in many respects to these models. Oh, but it still isn't able to pick out like GPT-4, oh, I have strong language comprehension, right? So, wow, it wasn't able to pick out that it itself was in this chart still, but it still was able to give me some sort of a insight into how it compares. That's just super weird. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what kind of insights we're gaining from doing this test, but it's definitely intriguing. So conclusion time, I think that this new GPT-4 O mini model is definitely pretty useful in the grand scheme of things. It is super cheap, super fast, and pretty reliable, not very hallucinatory. I like to see it open AI, I like to see you staying competitive, but man, I want some of those cutting edge, bleeding edge features as an AI enthusiast. I want to see my GPT-4 Omni voice mode. I want to see the image generation capabilities that also come with GPT-4 O. I would also love to see Sora actually get some sort of a public release and I would love to know a little bit more about the OpenAI strawberry fiasco which I'm going to talk about in tomorrow's video and a release date for GPT-5. Anyways, thank you so much everyone for watching today's video. I'll see you in the next one and I hope you have a good one. Goodbye.